And don't worry so much about handling them when you first get a baby. Let them get settled in, let them get used to you, and uh, those, those are just a few quick tips for uh, keeping our boreal snakes. Hey, good morning everybody. Welcome to the vlog. It's 4.30 in the morning. We are driving to Texas today to Universal Rock, but not before we stop in Indianapolis at my buddy Forrest's place. What do you say? We get on the road. And I'm down in Indianapolis, and of course you know I'm not going to be traveling through the area without stopping and seeing some of Desiree and Forrest's amazing animals. And Forrest is actually going to come down with us as well, but uh, we're going to kind of just let him go as we always do, because you know he loves talking about his animals, and I love just listening to him. So what do you have for us today? So today Today we're going to show you guys some awesome uh, Corallus species, which are tree boas from South America. So you guys know I love green tree pythons. More recent times I've been getting really, really interested in all these tree boas. And so we're going to show you a couple different species here today. This is Corallus caninus. This is the emerald tree boa. And these guys are from Suriname, French Guiana, Bolivia, and Venezuela. They're one of the larger species of Corallus, and you can see these guys are just absolutely beautiful. What's crazy is that people think of tree boas as like mean and aggressive. I mean, this thing is just, look at this, it's just crawling around like nothing, huh? Yeah, I know. Some of them actually have pretty gentle dispositions and can be tractable animals. Other ones are a little more aggressive, but you just have to, you know, work with each one on an individual basis. And if you kind of just let yourself become the perch, and don't go yanking them off the, the tree branch and let them do their thing. I find that a lot of them are able to be worked with uh, if, if you're brave enough to go up against those teeth. Just look at the head on this. And of course, they do have the largest teeth. I mean, they're absolutely incredible. But, uh, but as you can see, puppy dog tame. I mean, that is incredible. So we're continuing on with the, uh, with the Corallus caninus, the northern emerald tree boas. And we've got a couple variants for you here. So this one is actually called an anaconda phase. It's an almost patternless animal with some dark spots on it. And uh, some people say these are a different species. I don't know. Um, they're they're from a certain locality down in South America. What do you have here? I need to know the whole story about this animal here. What do you got going on here? So this animal's crazy. I'm super super excited to have this animal. This animal is named the Dark Knight. He's one of the only black emerald tree boas in the world. Now there's a few Amazon Basin black animals, but right now, as far as I know, this is one of only two in the world, and uh, he's the only male. So this is kind of a funny story. So Desiree went down to a reptile show in Texas. I was up here working and. Uh, wasn't able to go and uh, she goes to a show and she calls me and she, she says you wouldn't believe what I just found she tells me there's this black emerald tree boa I didn't believe her I said how much is it she said it's five thousand dollars I said five thousand dollars she sent me a picture of it next thing you know she's coming home with a, a black emerald tree boa the, the the funniest part of the story though was that the guy that brought the emerald tree boa to the show actually brought it to the show knowing that we were gonna be there oh. and <laughs> He actually bought the emerald tree boa from somebody off Craigslist as an nice. unchanged baby. So he bought it for a few hundred dollars off the internet as an unchanged baby that came in from uh, from probably Bushmaster, one of the importers, and uh, it turned into this. And so I'll, I'll be honest with you, Forrest. I think that price is a steal. I mean, yeah, that, that is one of the most incredible animals ever. Yeah, one one of the uh, more famous breeders of these out there actually offered me significantly more money than that for it. So. Exactly. But gosh, that thing is incredible. Once again, this is the reason I love coming down here and spending time, because I see snakes that I'm just blown away with time and time again. Tell me what's going on with these guys. All right, so here we have the next Corallus species. This is Corallus batsai, and uh, this is the Amazon Basin emerald tree boa. So these guys are the larger variant of the emerald tree boa. Um, they're also known for having a continual white stripe. All the, way, all the way down the back. Another thing that uh, separates them from the emerald tree boa is they have smaller uh, snout scales. So coloration, overall bigger size, and they're known for being a lot more calm. Now these guys haven't been imported for a long, long time. Every one of these you're gonna find in captivity is captive born. So an interesting thing about these, these guys were first described by English explorer uh, Henry Bates. And a cool thing about uh, Henry Bates, so they named this species in his honor, but they also named uh, Batsian mimicry after him. Batsian mimicry is basically where a harmless species imitates a more harmful species in order to defend itself. So when you see you know, butterflies and things like that that have these dangerous, scary patterns on them, that was after uh, Henry Bates. So two, two pretty incredible things named after uh, one incredible naturalist. 
That's pretty incredible. You know, I've heard of Batian mimicry, but I honestly had no idea it was the same guy that, that actually described the Amazon basins. That's pretty awesome. Before we get back to some of these amazing animals of forest and desirees, I actually had something that happened yesterday that I didn't put in the vlog. Just a litter of sambos that quite frankly didn't go the way I wanted to, but I wanted to at least share with you guys. You know, I always say, I'm gonna share the good things and I'm gonna share the bad things. So let's go ahead and take a look at that and then we'll come back and see what else Forrest has. I was just going through and checking the sambos and it looks like this girl, oh, she's having some babies right now. But look at, there's a couple infertile over in here. These are infertile over here, so these should have been babies. Oh, it looks like she still has a few left in her. I don't know if there's any live babies in here at all. Now, I don't really want to mess with the mom hardly at all. I'm just going to poke around really gently and see if there's any live babies in here. Let's see, what do we have? Nope, infertile. Look at this, there's actually a little baby inside the sack, but it's already gone. Oh, this is a disaster clutch here, guys. Is there anything alive in here? Oh, more infertile ova. Oh, darn. Oh, wait, wait a second. Oh, there's a baby right here. Oh, there's at least one baby. Look at that little monkey right there. Oh my gosh, okay. Oh, I could see another one right here. I could see another one. Oh, right here. Okay, we've got two babies. Oh my gosh, two beautiful little babies. It looks like that might be it. You know, I tell you what guys, I'm gonna go ahead and just shut her up right now because I don't wanna stress her out anymore. There's definitely two live babies in this. And again, the reasons for infertile over like that can be all kinds of different things for whatever reason, which is essentially a live birth animal's infertile egg, essentially is what you can think about it. But instead of being an egg, it's actually an ova mass, which would have been babies. But at least she did have a couple babies. She still looks like she has some stuff in her. So hopefully she'll have a couple more good babies. Again, that infertility can be a number of reasons. It could be heat, it just could be bad breeding, it could be a male, it could be a female whatever. Regardless, whenever you get good babies of any amount, you gotta be happy about it. And I couldn't be more happy with these cute little dudes here. Back with Forrest. All right, so these are Corallus ruschenbergi. And uh, they're also known as the black-tailed tree boa. And believe it or not, you know, they start out looking kind of like an Amazon tree boa, Corallus hortolanus. They actually grow to be really big as one of the largest members of, uh, of the Corallus family. I really like the color on them, that nice golden brown and uh, yellow coloration on them. Just a really cool species, not very common at all. These guys are from Venezuela and Trinidad. So uh, not something too common. Looking forward to uh, hopefully breeding these guys in the future. So this is the annulated tree boa, Corallus annulatus. These guys I think are just absolutely amazing. As you can see here, we've already got you know quite a bit of vari variability going in, in our collection with this species. I really like some of these high orange ones. This one's got kind of lighter gray and some white calico looking spots on them. These guys are really cool because they give you the same kind of look, I guess, as like an Amazon tree boa, but they don't come with the attitude. <laughs> so that's something that's really neat about them is that they're actually um, fairly friendly and easy to handle, so. and these guys are relatively uncommon. I mean, you don't see a lot yeah. of these at all. Yeah, this is a pretty rare species to see in captivity. It's not been easy tracking these guys down. Yeah, and, and to, to see a whole bunch of them all at once, that's that's a treat for me, being a guy that loves tree boas. You don't see these hardly ever. I've only seen a handful of these actually in person myself. So to just see a whole bunch of them is uh, pretty awesome. And some of these guys are insanely beautiful. I mean, look at this one right here. Holy moly. So this is pretty cool. This is actually something that does occur in the wild sometimes. This is a hybrid between the Amazon Basin Emerald Tree Boa and the normal Emerald Tree Boa. So it's a Caninus Batsai hybrid. And uh, these produce some, some pretty incredible animals. So one thing that's so fascinating about tree pythons and tree boas is what a great example it is of convergent evolution. So it's something that usually in science books when that issue comes up of convergence, this is usually the main example that they use. Now this is a green tree python that comes from Australia and Indonesia. They basically occupy exactly the same ecological niche in the rainforest, up in the trees, and evolution basically created these, you know, exactly the same snake in two different parts of the world. So I find that to be really, really fascinating. And they're both such amazing species to work with. I get a lot of questions all the time about, is this a good first snake for me? How do I keep them? I get asked a lot of questions. One of the biggest things that I would really try to stress to people about keeping these kind of snakes is don't overfeed them. Overfeeding reptiles in, in general is a huge problem with people. Anthropomorphizing our, our reptiles, and basically what that means is it means trying to put our, our human care needs 
onto reptiles is a really dangerous thing. And animals like these emerald tree boas, they only need to eat about once a month is plenty for these guys. I actually only feed them once in between each defecation. So doing it any more than that can cause obesity, prolapse, all kinds of issues. So don't overfeed them and don't worry so much about handling them when you first get a baby. Let them get settled in, let them get used to you. And uh, those, those are just a few quick tips for uh, keeping our boreal snakes. As always, I'm blown away at Forrest's knowledge, his passion, his animals, and everything. I hope that you guys enjoy when we're kind of visiting Forrest. Don't worry, he's coming along with us to Texas, so you're gonna see him over the next couple days. I think he's only staying down there for two or three days with us. We'll be down there for a little bit longer building out the Reptarium. Of course, we have a long drive ahead of us today, so let's go ahead and get on the road. I think we're gonna drive about 10 or 12 hours today, so uh, let's go ahead and do it. And I made it to the hotel, and it's exactly midnight. So essentially, I left 20 hours ago from my house. We stopped at Forrest. We drove all the way. Definitely a very long day. And by the way, I only got like two hours of sleep last night. So I am definitely buckled and cannot wait to hit this bed right here and get a little bit of sleep. Tomorrow we head back over to Universal Rock, continue to work on the Reptarium. I'm going to be checking back in with BHB. The crew is going to be doing a lot of vlogging this week. So hopefully you guys don't get bored of me showing you these awesome enclosures that we are building for the zoo. Regardless, we're going to have a great week no matter what happens. And I hope that you guys have an absolutely amazing day. Thank you so much for tuning in today. And thank you for being with me for 20 hours. After all, I needed your guys' support to get through this. Do me a couple favors before we get out of here. Can you smash that like button? Turn those post notifications on so you know when I upload a video, which is every day at 9 o'clock in the morning Eastern Standard Time. Remember to be kind to someone today, and I promise I will see you guys tomorrow. Mm -hmm.